Good morning, Facebook. Hello, hello, everybody. It is Saturday the 6th, the day before Super Bowl. It's the 6th, right? Yep, the 6th, February 6th. Saturday morning, uh, quarter to 8. Uh, I am getting ready to go for my morning run, my daily run. Uh, it is um, a little chilly out. It's like 27, 26 degrees. Uh, the last two weeks, it was like 19, 18 degrees when I ran, so a little bit warmer today. Um, let's see, people always ask me, aren't you cold, aren't you cold uh, when you run? When you have the right equipment, um, the right gear, it's so easy. It's like super easy to, uh, to go out and um, not be cold. So it's all about the tools, right? All about the tools. We all know the right tool for the right job, the right jacket for the right run, the right shoes. Um, if you look at my running shoes, I got like six, seven running shoes that are all lined up depending on what the weather is. The other night I ran on my spikes because it was very icy out. Um, so if it's wet, I have Gore-Tex waterproof. Um, if I'm doing trail, I have a couple different options for trails. And then I have my road shoes. So the right tool for the right job. So I'm, I'm usually not cold. So people say, I don't know how you do it, Marcus. The right tool for the right job. Just like in the kitchen. Just like in the kitchen where you have the right pot, the right knife, the right, the right tool for the right dish, right? The right pot for the right dish. So it is Saturday. What's everybody up to today? Um, what is everybody up to today? Um, anybody have any plans? Um, I think Jamie and I are going to Rebibro today. Um, go say hi to Harry, the owner of Rebibro. And, um, and Jonathan, the manager, just go say hello to them. Um, see what they have that's, um, that is, um, that's new over there at Rebibro. Uh, let's see. So, um, March 19th through the 21st, we're doing our Finger Lakes Wine Weekend 2. Uh, we're doing Cuca Lake. We're over halfway sold out. If you're interested in that, um, let us know right away. It's $800 a person. Um, we've been updating the page on the website um, um, all week, or we updated it the other day, and we had a glitch yesterday. We had to delete some stuff and reprogram that page. So we'll have mostly all the information's there, though. Um, if you click under Seneca or um, Seneca or um, Cuca, Cuca Lake takes you to the same page. So, um, hitting some trails with my Jeep, that sounds like fun. Uh, Scott, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, anybody else doing anything adventurous today um, out there? Um, good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Hillary. Um, hi, Teresa. Hi, Sue. Hello, Joel all the way from um, Arizona. It's early in Arizona, Joel. Um, so good morning, everybody. Hi, Josh. So yeah, just drop some comments of anything you're doing today or this weekend. Um, Joel says he'll be soaking up some sun by the pool. I'm sure that's very true in Arizona. Thank you, Joel, for um, <laughs> rubbing it into us. Um, but good for you, that's awesome. Uh, enjoy that. Hi, Christine. Just ever drop comments what they're doing um, either today or tomorrow for the Super Bowl and who, who, or who you're rooting for for the Super Bowl. Who you're rooting for for the Super Bowl. So, um, what is it? The Kansas City Chiefs and Tampa Bay um, are playing uh, in Tampa Bay. I think one of the very, very few times um, in the last couple of decades that the Super Bowl's at the home teams um, in the home team city. So, that's exciting for them down there. Kind of a little unfair advantage, though, for the other team, right? If you're in your home city. Um, so, uh, Brendan says, going to Baldwin Winery. Yeah, I've never been to Baldwin. I should probably go visit them. Um, I know they make those those great uh, berry wine, strawberry wine and stuff. But I've actually never been to Baldwin. I should go check them out. Um, yesterday at our Airbnb, I put out all the stuff for the local wine, wine trail. Um, on the, uh, like in the visitors area. So, um, but Baldwin, I gotta get to. So, good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Brenda. Um, so, yeah, Joel doesn't like Tom Brady. Yeah, you know, Tom Brady was good for a couple of Super Bowls, but let's give somebody else a chance to win. That's my feeling on it. Um, you know, obviously a great player, um, really, really great player. Um, and, you know, he's being touted, what is he, 42, 42 years old, I think Tom Brady is. Um, and um, obviously in great shape, um, a great leader, 
Uh, so uh, congratulations to Tom Brady and his whole career. But I'd like to, I'd like, to, I always like to see the underdog or other people go. Um, I think he's had enough chances, but he's earned it, of course. He's earned it, so nothing, no, no hate there at all. Um, but it would be nice if somebody else um, um, could uh, could win uh, instead of him all the time. So, but of course, er, win the fair way, of course, by hard work and dedication and talent. Of course, I don't want to take anything away from Tom Brady because he's very talented, and you know, I would love to. I love if he went to the Denver Broncos, right? I'm a huge Denver Bronco fan growing up in Colorado. Um, Denver Broncos were, uh, were my team. They still are my team, although I'm in New York, so I got to root for New York teams. So, uh, yeah, so Jamie and I are going to Ribibero today. Um, I had to go to Jersey yesterday and pick up a bunch of things um, from one of the companies we do business with. I go about once a month to Jersey. Um, I got some Spanish um, Corvina, some wild Spanish Corvina. I got my octopus and my Spanish octopus. It's from the importer there. Um, they could FedEx to me, but we pick up so many things that $2 a pound for FedEx saves me several hundred dollars. I save like four or $500 by even more by FedEx charges by going down there for the morning. So I kind of justify it. So I went down to um, Newark yesterday. Um, and um, it's part of the beef program, we're in the grass fed beef program that we use from New Zealand. I'm actually part of the training program, the training videos for the farmers in New Zealand. So um, we have some kind of we have a connection there uh, with that. So I go ahead and pick up all, all of our ribeyes, and um, sometimes they'll ship to me. Um, but when I get a big enough order, I go down there and I justify spending my morning down there by saving two dollars a pound. So if I buy three hundred pounds, I'm saving six hundred dollars. And um, we got some beautiful um, pork shanks in some some um, uh, fillet tips. I uh, got some octopus, lots of octopus back in stock, so we're gonna cook that today. Um, it comes frozen from Spain. Uh, Corvina, which we've never really served before. Corvina is a great fish. Um, this one's wild caught in Spain. Uh, Corvina is an awesome fish, smaller fish. So good morning, everybody else is tuning in. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Eileen. So yeah, just everybody drop a comment what you're doing today or what you're doing for the Super Bowl. Um, and uh, we picked a we picked a winner for our Super Bowl box. Thank you everybody for everybody who um, entered that contest. Uh, we had lots and lots of comments and um, my assistant, I went to my assistant, I said, listen, we need to do this contest, but I wanna make it very simple on picking the winner. I don't wanna like write everybody's names down and put them into a basket. He goes, Marcus, uh, there's an actual program for this that actually picks the winner. Um, we have nothing to do with it, just we run the program on this. So I said, perfect, it's like commentpicker.com or something. And he ran that uh, for us and picked the winner. So um, congratulations uh, to the winner for that. Um, and uh, they get a Super Bowl box. We do have a couple Super Super Bowl boxes left. Um, some people, um, you know, some people are going to small gatherings. Um, just be safe, obviously, right? Um, some people are going to small gatherings. We got one email from somebody who said, you know, I like everything you do, but I don't appreciate you. Advertising a party box for Super Bowl, I feel that it's irresponsible. Um, so I can understand that. I can understand that email. I can totally understand that email. Um, most people are going somewhere anyway. Uh, a lot of people said they are going where we have. We've sold a good amount of boxes. Um, I don't think we're encouraging people to go party uh, in big groups and things like that. Uh, but if you are getting together with some friends, family. Um, you know, um, we've got you covered for Super Bowl box. So today's the last day to jump in on that. Um, cause we have to basically prep a lot of things today and I don't want to be doing that tomorrow in the kitchen. I want to be able to get all the many boxes we sold out the door. So, uh, you can get a Super Bowl box. If you, if you're not going or not going to be around, you know, four other people or six other people, we have, um, our top seven food items. We brought back lobster mac and cheese for this. Uh, tomorrow only lobster mac and cheese for some reason not for some reason but our website if you go to like Yelp our menu on Yelp or Yelp on a menu on TripAdvisor we can't update that menu we've lost control of the program that we were using for that and we can no longer update that the new the other company wants like $800 or $700 for us to buy this program to update our menu on Yelp and TripAdvisor they make it they don't make it that easy uh, for businesses to do that so these other companies um have these interfaces and they charge a lot, a lot of money. The company we were using was GoDaddy and I don't like to use GoDaddy. I don't use them for any of my domain names, uh, but GoDaddy had this platform that did it for us and they discontinued it. 
single platform is the company that does it now, or the company, the other company that's out there that does it, and they charge a lot of money. So we just haven't, I just have not been able to just to spend six or seven hundred dollars or whatever it is, eight hundred dollars to update our menus on Yelp, and I know I should be, but it's a lot of money going to the winter time um, in a pandemic, not knowing eight hundred dollars. I mean, that pays employees that kind of money. Um, so I'd rather have money here for payroll than have my menu 100% accurate online. So if you go on to Yelp and TripAdvisor, it's gonna list lobster mac and cheese sale, that's wrong. Our website is correct, because I have control of our website. I just wish Yelp and TripAdvisor that they just wouldn't make it such a racket and make it, you know, make it just super easy for us to do that. So that's the story of that. So lobster mac and cheese is coming back for our top seven tomorrow. The margarita pizzas from Italy, we have a lot of those in stock ready to go. The frozen pizzas, you pop them in your oven, they're $10.99 a pizza, and you'll have the most amazing pizza ever. Uh, pulled pork sandwiches, those are $12.99. Um, baked pretzels and mustard, uh, they're $2.50 each. Uh, smoked wings, of course, our uh, shrimp cocktail, $19.99 a pound. Our um, sustainable shrimp from Ecuador. Uh, prosciutto, uh, Italian prosciutto uh, from, from Parma, uh, from that area, that's $16 a pound. Those are in half pound increments, ready to go. Um, so, oops, there's gonna be other typo that I'll have to fix that right away. And we just got a brand new keg of Sloop Juice Bomb. Sloop Juice Bomb was killing it for us for the longest time. And I did something a couple, uh, like a month or so ago, where I took Sloop, Sloop, or two months ago, where I took Sloop off. I felt Sloop had really concentrated the market here in Ellenville, and two other restaurants were pouring Sloop. And um, I just feel that, you know, with, with 5,000 breweries in the U.S., that um, I don't have to repeat, or other restaurants don't have to repeat what I'm doing, um, or nor does a rep have to flood a market on the same street with um, the same beer. I figure, you know, be interesting, be different, um, especially with 5,000 choices. So we're doing Fiddlehead on uh, the Fiddlehead IPA, uh, but I heard Sloop Juice Bomb is not in all those areas now here in Ellenville, so we brought Sloop Juice Bomb back. I just love the Sloop Juice Bomb. It's really a fantastic beer. Um, we tried to do Wrench, um, from um, industrial arts, and the price just wouldn't come in. The price point wasn't just wasn't wasn't good enough to pop, uh, to do five dollar pints of of, of wrench. Uh, we really blow these pints out on Sloop Juice Bomb. We sold a lot of Sloop um, as a result. Of, sold sold a lot of Fiddlehead as, as a result of that. But the um, the stuff from industrial arts just couldn't come down to the right price. It was like fifty dollars more a keg, and it's tough to charge five dollars a pint. Again, um, we lowered a lot of prices during. Um, during this pandemic, that'd be more affordable. So, all right, so um, thank you everybody else for tuning in. Uh, good morning, Ron, good morning, Diane. Hello, Greg, hi, Rebecca. So yeah, don't just drop a comment what you're doing today, what you're doing for Super Bowl, who you want to win, things like that. And um, let's see, that's about it for here. Wine dinner on Monday, uh, pretty much sold out. We might have two seats left for our Seneca Lake wine dinner, revisiting the wines of Seneca Lake. Um, Great thing to do every other Monday night here at Aroma Time. Come in, get four tastes of wine and a dish for um, twenty-five dollars. Great, great deal. All right, folks, that's it for today. Maybe we'll do. Maybe we'll do a live if we do go to Rivibro. Anything can happen here at any point uh, of the day here. Uh, if we do go to Rivibro, maybe we'll do a little Facebook live over on Rivibro. Talk about what's going on over there. If you've not been to Rivibro, um, very cool winery here in Gardner near New Pulse. Uh, it used to be the Rivendale, the original Rivendale Winery, which was owned um, by Filthy Giraffe Restaurant. Uh, the owner there, she had opened this. Um, uh, they had opened it and um, it had closed several years back. I believe they got a divorce. I'm not sure what exactly happened, but they had closed. And then um, Harry had bought had bought uh, this, uh, this winery and uh, brought it back to life. They planted some vines out there. Um, so... Uh, the former Rivendale is now Rivibro. If you've heard some of my Facebook lives in the past, I just automatically say, hey, I'm at Rivendale, and I'm not, I'm at Rivibro. The old Rivendale, it's just, it's just common, or just, you know, just one of those things that just happens subconsciously when I'm talking about the winery, but it is Rivibro Winery. Um, they make some cool wines, great space to hang out. They have a huge fire pit outside, great big lawn um, in the summertime. It's really happening there. Um, you can socially distance very, very easily and sit out on the lawn and have a great time. I'm not sure if the fire pit's going today, and probably would be, um, I'm assuming more than ever, uh, here in the winter time. I just heard a truck pull in outside and uh, put its brakes on and stopped. That means I have a delivery here. Um, good morning, Carlos. 
Good morning, Carlos. Um, Carlos, are you in Tampa? I know you're in Florida somewhere. Are you in Tampa? And what are you doing for the Super Bowl down there? Um, good morning, Kate. So Carlos is a my roommate when I worked at the Greenbrier in West Virginia. Um, Carlos is a very acclaimed chef. Um, done some really great stuff. Worked some great places, Carlos. Um, he's an executive chef down there at a great club. So. Brenda's saying been there but gets very busy. Yeah, Rebibro can get busy. Uh, it's a very popular spot. They can, can get busy. But the great thing is they have lots and lots of lawn space. I don't expect anybody to go out on the lawn today and <laughs> lounge out there. But in the summertime, um, they have a great spot. You can really socially distance and be out there and have a good time. You can literally hang out there all day long. Um, if you're out on the lawn there, you can bring your own food. Uh, if you're on their deck, you have to buy their food, which is understandable. Um, that's how that's how we all make money. So um, I saw the products that we stock. Uh, that's the one thing you know that that I never quite understood. When you go to a restaurant, uh, it's not proper etiquette just to show up with a birthday cake. You need to call the restaurant first and say, you know, we have we're celebrating a birthday. Can you provide a birthday cake? Like you wouldn't go to a mechanic with your own parts. Um, you know, mechanics sell parts, mechanics sell tires, they sell tires, they, restaurants sell food. So, you know, it's just, it's, we charge a cake cutting fee uh, because, you know, I have to wash your dishes still, we have to do labor on it, and I'm losing revenue, let's face it. If you walk in with a cake um, at a restaurant, um, and a lot of people do, a lot of people do this totally unannounced, 100% unannounced. They walk in and, oh, we got a cake tonight. And I look at the cake, there's eight people, I'm like, well, gee, I just lost, you know, $6 times, I just lost 40 bucks. The server just lost, the team member just lost, you know, um, on 40 bucks they lost if it's 20%. They just lost an $8 tip. You know, we're losing money and, and so, um, some restaurants will tell you to, and if you called me ahead of time and said, you know, I need a cake, this, that, with enough notice, if I can get you a cake, I would, but a lot of restaurants can't just whip out a cake like that. So, um, a lot of restaurants do charge cake cutting fees. And we, we actually waive the cake cutting fee if you buy dessert. So we just ask, hey, if half your table buys dessert, Bring your cake, we'll cut it, we'll serve it, we won't charge you a cake cutting fee. Um, but you know, some people get upset, like, what do you mean you, I can't bring a cake? Or what do you mean I have to charge a cake cutting fee? Well, folks, we're in the restaurant business, we're in the food business. You can't bring food to a restaurant, sit and occupy. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't take coffee to Starbucks and just sit there and lounge out. Um, no, because um, they sell coffee, that's their deal, right? Food's our deal, so um, just keep that in mind wherever you, whatever restaurant you go to. Give them the proper courtesy, call them ahead of time. Some, will, some, some can accommodate your cake. Some have cakes ready to go. They have somebody there on staff that can you know, write on it and do whatever. Um, um, someone will give you free dessert, you know, so whatever. Just call them ahead of time. And uh, then if they can't do it, say, if I did bring a cake, what is your cake cutting fee? Um, and insurance is getting, getting stricter on this. Um, our insurance is just, just don't like people to bring food in because we have no control over it. We have no control. So much... Um, foodborne illness happens from home cooks because home cooks aren't um, trained as properly as as a restaurant chef or uh, overseen by the health department and and you know some people just you know will, will cross-contaminate things and and insurance companies know that insurance companies don't like people to bring their own food in to restaurants um, it's a no-no so do insurance companies really enforce it no do restaurants sometimes enforce it yes um, that's it folks um, I'm gonna get ready for my run here in a few minutes um, and, uh, that's it. I hope everybody has an amazing, amazing day and I'll talk to you later.